An emotional new documentary is set to premiere tomorrow in Toronto on World Mental Health Day. It explores the life of Attila Chani, who was found dead on a Hamilton rooftop after struggling with addiction and schizophrenia. The film is intensely personal. In it, Attila's twin brother Richard retraces the steps of Attila's life and his tragic death. And their longtime friend, Stephen Hozier, was the director. I sat down with both men to discuss the film and how the system failed Attila. Stephen, Richard, congratulations on the film. And uh, Richard, I'm very sorry for the loss of your twin brother. Why was it so important for you to share your story? After Attila passed, there was nothing left to lose. Well, I'm a firm believer in like uh, the way you grow up. It, like it has lifelong effects. Like if you're in a healthy environment, loving family, um, supportive as well, it's likely that you're going to be a little more successful, you'll uh, um, be able to communicate better, you'll be able to get the help you need if you, in the event that you need help. When it comes to the, the mental health supports, like what do you think could have made a real difference in, um, in Attila's life? I guess it all kind of starts in childhood for Richard and Attila. They were placed into um, uh, foster care and they suffered like horrific abuse in their first foster home and that obviously had lifelong lasting effects on the twins um, and uh, yeah in I guess late teens early adulthood until I started developing schizophrenia and Richard shared many times that he struggled so long and hard to get Attila the treatment he needed including like medication um, a, well, a diagnosis medication housing. I was trying to figure out and like navigate my way through the system and you know the Mental Health Act actually it, I feel it doesn't protect the the people who have schizophrenia I feel like it's like a band-aid in interventions where like you you go in you, you you bring them into the hospital and right away they send them back out on the street with no real um, treatment plan in order and you know no they don't reach out to family support. There was one time um, where he did OD prior to the one that he, when he died, and um, they did, the hospital didn't even reach out to his family to let them know, oh, your brother OD'd, um, we have him in our care and maybe we need some intervention, right? Early intervention would be the first step, I believe, is early intervention. Um, when we first came out about our, the abuse, this is why we stopped sharing our story with people back in the days, because we weren't believed, um, and they made us recant our allegations, which was terrible, and that kind of prevented us from getting the help that we needed. And um, by then the damage was already done. So if there's one thing that you hope people come get out of this film, what would it be? So yeah, the, the film really addresses the ties between child welfare, homelessness, mental health and the opioid crisis. And um, my hope is that people will be given a different perspective into those living with these struggles and these hardships. Um, and my, my hope is that, you know, um, like how does someone end up dead on a rooftop in Hamilton? How does someone end up living homeless and how does someone end up with a serious mental illness like schizophrenia? We, Richard in this film has investigated the life and death of Attila in, in hopes of shining a light and kind of spotlighting some of the, the gaps um, that he felt through, throughout his life that ultimately led to the, you know, his premature death. It's a conversation starter. I, I think your film is going to open minds and eyes and uh, thank you for sharing your story with us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate it. If you'd like to watch the film, Attila premieres tomorrow on the 75th anniversary of World Mental Health Day at the Hot Dog Cinema in Toronto.